For this routine, you need to take the top card and cut it into the deck. Then with complete confidence, you need to cut directly to that card. Okay, so I was recently reading uh, The Royal Road to Carb Magic by Frederick Brewer and Jean Huggard. Probably saying that wrong because I believe they're French, so probably can't pronounce the names properly. But I was recently reading it and a trick in here called Designed for Laughter. This is where the story gets a bit weird. So there's a bit of patter in this book. I didn't read originally as patter. I read it as part of the method of the trick. Which sounds strange, but let me read it to you quickly. When you cut the cards, I shall instruct you. You will say to yourself, this I cannot fail to do. And then it goes on to a bit that says, that is an application to feats of skill with cards of the principles of emin eminent French psychologist, Dr. Q? Cui. Cui. It is surprising that when a person cuts with complete confidence, he will actually cut to a card which he has chosen and which has been shuffled into the pack. Now, as soon as I read this, I completely forgot that I read the words shuffled into the pack and I just thought we were cutting the deck and then cutting straight back to the card. So I gave it a try. I'm like, okay, with complete confidence, let's give this a go. And it worked. And I did it multiple times in a row with different cards. No crimps, no breaks, no breathers, no, no nothing. And it really caught me by surprise. It was weird. Now, of course, looking back on that text, I realised that is just part of the patter. I do believe Dr. Cui. Cui. is actually a psychologist. Um, I think the author was referencing this psychologist here. So I actually posted a clip of this on Instagram of me taking the deck, flipping the card over, and then putting it back. And I was like, eight of spades? Yeah, I can cut to the eight of spades, you know, with 100% confidence. And then I just cut straight to the eight of spades. It's ridiculous. Now I believe it's just muscle memory and seeing where the card goes and then your fingers just instantly reach for it or automatically reach for it. Um, I can't do it 100% of the time, but with 100% confidence, I can do it quite a lot of the time. Let me show you. Okay, so this is a completely regular deck of cards right here. And it's definitely not 100% of reliable or anything, but if you got the feeling of cutting in the same spot every single time, uh, you could probably... Alright, let's go right there. It's not there. Is it here? Yes. That is exactly what you want. Two of hearts. Cut. Cut. I'm going to cut to the two of hearts. That's not it. That doesn't feel right. I'm going to cut to the two of hearts. I'm not sure if that's it either. Let's see. Oh, look at that it is. So yeah, you kind of surprise yourself, and I was doing this multiple times in a row with success, and I actually stood up at one point and just walked across the room because I was surprising myself so much. Ten of spades. Let's cut to the ten of spades, right there. See, it's... What? <laughs> I didn't actually think I'd gotten it just then, and I did. This is crazy. So what I was talking about while cutting the cards was as you cut some off, you're holding this many and you put them down. And then if you're not cutting directly in half, like say you cut two thirds of the deck off and then you're holding a third left, you want to try to get used to the feeling of this third of cards in your fingers as you put it down. And then as I square up, I also note like roughly where it is so then when I cut, I'm cutting the deck fast enough that hopefully my fingers haven't forgotten what the feel of the cards was like 
and uh, we're, hopefully I can like eyeball it to get that one card. Now obviously you could probably improve your chances more by bending the card slightly as you like turn it over. I don't think you need to. I'm wondering if you could do it with a spectator, like have them cut the cards, and if you eyeball it enough, whether it would actually be possible to then cut to where they cut the card into the deck. I have no idea. So I actually do think this idea has a little bit of merit, especially for some routines. You could uh, have them have them, or just have you cut the card into the deck as fairly as possible, and then do another cut straight away. And you're either going to cut straight to their card or you're not. Now, if you don't cut to their card, there's ways, of course, of uh, finding their card afterwards or, you know, continuing on with another effect. But if you do cut to their card, you've got a pretty strong effect right there and then. So I definitely think it's kind of like a, you know, an out in the middle of a routine. I'm not sure. But it's just it's just a thing you could use. And if it doesn't work, well, you just continue on with whatever you were going to do. So I really like this idea. And I read it on accident as part of the patter of a trick in Royal Road to Card Magic. So that is it for this video. I just wanted to touch on that idea of uh, cutting the cards, which I actually think is really great. And I might try and incorporate it into a routine of some sort at some point. You can find some really great stuff, whether it's inspiration or actual like slights and tricks within magic books. And a lot of people don't read nowadays. I would guess, yeah, see you on the next video. These glasses are great. <laughs>